Today we're joined by Scottish artist Tagavaka. Tagavaka is an artist I've been following since I first heard his track Most Drama in 2022. Since the inception of his project, Tagavaka has signed multiple tracks and EPs to Anjuna Deep, Songs by This Never Happened, Colorize, and more. His music is a blend of dreamy, melodic soundscapes and gentle house beats to create his signature sound. And today he joins Basic Waves to showcase his workflow while writing a track completely from scratch in Logic Pro X. And now over to Tagavaka. Hey everybody, this is Tagavaka here and uh, today I'm working with Basic Waves to, to on a challenge to basically create a track in a few hours uh, utilising their sample packs and, their, and some of their um, Diva presets. So just a quick intro about myself for, for those that don't know me. Um, I'm a music producer um, from Glasgow in Scotland uh, and I release on, on labels just like uh, Anjuna Deep. So yeah, I'm really into a lot of melodic, um, sort of stripped back and, you know, very, very deep style music. So uh, what I'll do today is I'll just show you through my workflow. I'll show you the way I create tracks from scratch. I haven't really dug around the, the presets too much because I kind of want to see what I might use. Um, in terms of my style, I tend to be relatively simple. I don't like to overload with a lot of plugins, but today I will use some plugins that, that you know you guys might not have access to. So if there's anything that you need clarity on, please feel free to drop a comment. Um I'll try and answer from then. So yeah, let's see let's see what I can do. So first of all I'll show you just what it is that I use as a sort of starting template here. So um I'll always start with a software synth. In this case, this is just this is Diva, and uh, what I'll do is I'll I'll always have a a delay bus. So in this case, I use the UAD Galaxy Tape Echo. I really like that one because it's as close as you can get to the yeah, the the legit tape tape um, tape delay. So that one's always there. I use it quite subtly as well. Um, I also run a reverb bus. I use um, I use Phoenix Verb here, which is quite a nice one. <clears throat> There's something like a sort of medium hall. Yeah, it gives it really, really nice. I, I don't I don't tend to muck about too much with it here. And I also like to run the a slight stereo image on this one just just to give the um, the reverb a little bit of width. And I also I probably won't be using vocals today, but this is my vocal strip. I tend to use um, CLA vocals from Waves. I actually use this preset here called Judy Judy Judy, which is one of my favourites. It gives vocals just a little bit more um, top end, and it's got it's got really nice reverb and delay. Um, I tend to use the SSL Vintage Drive on any vocals, which is basically just saturation, uh, and that's just to give it a, the harmonics and the vocal just to give it a little bit of a push. Uh, I also use the graphic vintage graphic equalizer um, and what I do here is I actually run uh, a, this frequency which is 24, 24 kilohertz. <clears throat> I tend to push it quite high. What it does it gives it a little bit more air but it sometimes doesn't always work for vocals. Uh, and the final one I use, it isn't my full uh, rack yet but this is my drum bus. Um, here I use the Waves J37, uh, and that's really to do with just that. That's a tape saturator, so I'll, I like to to saturate the drums slightly. Uh, and actually, I won't add them in yet. But one of my other favourites for my for my drum bus is I'll tend to use I tend to use this. This is the SSL native uh, drum strip, which is really really good. But I will get to that. If, I might not use it, but if I do, I'll ex I'll explain. How that one works. So let's see. The the way I generally like to write music is I'll always really start with like melody. I'll start with hooks or you know a nice chord pattern. So we'll see what's sitting here. So as you can see, I've got basic waves, analog explorations. I've got divisions, volume two, 
and Visions Volume 3. So I will stick as much as I can to to working on this preset pack. So let's have a little play. So this is obviously just the first one here, which is just an arcade duo. <clears throat> so let's see, keys. A lot of the time straight away I will put the delay and reverb bus just to give these a little bit extra, just to imagine what they're like in terms of their sound. Sounds good. Yeah, I would maybe take the noise down on this one. That's a nice one. Just label this. Soft, soft keys. Well, what I like to do is I like to go through <clears throat> a lot of the sounds and pick out a bunch that, that might work on an idea. So I'll probably generally have four or five sounds that I'll go through. So I'll maybe just five. So I'll go through, see if there's anything else. Yeah, that's a good one, that sounds... Yeah, I think that one sounds quite... Yeah, that, I like the fact that it's quite responsive to the, to the velocity on the keys. Yeah, that's one I'm gonna use this, let's call these... All these big chords, these probably can get quite big. One thing I would probably one thing I would probably do here is maybe just mess around with the with the sustain, the decay. Maybe I'll make it a little bit punchier. Probably now what I'll do is I'll just I'll add a I'll add my EQ onto here. Uh, it sounds pretty low end. Let's just cut on this one. Maybe what I'm looking for next, if I've got chords, is maybe to look 
top lane, soft top lane maybe. I like that tombra, but I don't like the glide so much, so maybe turn the glide down. can hear the low end on that as well, it's really low endy. So I quite like that one. Let's call that top. Top lane keys. See if we can... Tune slightly. A little bit better. Turn this down. Yeah, I could work, probably keep it there. Um, I think I maybe want to find either some string like string like pads now, something that's gonna really fill out the sound. but it's quite bright. Again, I'd probably add, yeah, gonna add my EQ. Yeah, what I might do is just add is add a sidechain onto this one so I can get an idea of what it might sound like if it's super sidechain-y. What I like to use is Nicky Romero's kickstart, can't really, you can't really mess with that one. one movement movement pads nails well anything in these other packs as well keys Maybe use that as a sort of pedal, pedal note type thing, you know. Use that, let's call this pedal note. Okay, one, two, three, four. Let's, let's run with those and let's, what I'll do is I'll maybe pick a good, let's base everything around these chords. Let's make this, keep this at one, two, one. Let's 
write some chords here. So I generally like to write in F minor. Um, it's sort of my go-to. But I'll try not to this time because quite a lot of my productions are in F minor, so I'll actually maybe just try a... Okay, so I'm going to try and write this in G minor. Um, sounds pretty nice, it should work. In terms of like writing a bass line along alongside them, it sort of fits in a nice um, frequency range to write some bass notes. So... So I think I'm going to try and record this in, maybe those little stuttery notes. So I'm going to, I'm going to go from G minor to a sort of an, an A, an A flat major. So it's like a seventh, E flat major seventh, so. And down to like E flat. So, I'll try and record this in, in a, this will be ridiculously out of time because I'm recording this uh, on the software and it's got a latency, so please bear with me, this is going to be a really, really crap attempt at <laughs> trying to get this on time. Yeah, that was terrible, sorry. <laughs> but let's, what we'll do is we'll fix this in the, fix this in the piece here. Let's see if Quantize can save this in any way. This is really out of time. Quite a cool hook, I think. So I've actually just taken the delay off this one because it's a little bit too... I don't really like it that much, but what I'll do is it's something I really, really like doing. I want to get some weird movement and some weird sounds um, as a delay effect. I'm going to just duplicate this again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, oh, it's here, portal. This is output portal. This is sort of a granular uh, FX engine. <clears throat> I use it quite a lot in my productions um, if I want to get some interesting sounds. So. Just, I've taken all the low end off so it doesn't interfere too much with the original chords. So the one I really like using here, I love quite like glitch.
So if you listen to it kind of layered, it should, we can mess around with it here. So as you can hear when you add it in the background, it just gives it a little bit of sort of dynamic movement. I also like that reverse, um, I like that reverse sound, so what I might do is just record in the touch maybe every second or fourth bar just to do a reverse here. Oh, done it the opposite way around. Yeah, that'd be better. Yeah, so for some reason it did it the opposite way around, but let me see how we get on with this. So it just gives that a little bit of dynamic movement just at the end there. So I'm gonna make sure this is automated here. I'm just keeping it quite loose. I'm not keeping it too too strict. And what I think is advantageous of giving yourself, a, let's call this big chords, a grand granular FX. You can dial it back in and out. Keep that there. Um, I think these work chords might work pretty well because when I try and find a bass line for this one, the, the bass line might make this a little bit more interesting as we're doing it. What I, I might look at is maybe these soft keys. Maybe try and write a, a counter melody alongside these. This little counter melody.
worry, but quantize that and we'll see what we can get here. Keep that looked. There, I'm gonna think maybe these movement pads to imagine what it might sound like as a build up. another pad. I think it has to be a little bit softer. sets much nicer there. I'm going to record that in. I'm just going to quantize these. Don't actually like those top, but I'm going to take those off. One thing I'll probably look for now, I might look for a little, I'm going to not use these ones, but I'm going to look for a bass line, something quite warm.
that one, but I'm not so sure it's got the frequency. So what I tend to use, I quite like using this um, just to give it a little bit boost, is the Universal Audio uh, Pultec QP1A Legacy. There's a really great pre preset on this one called Bass Big and Fat, and this one just basically just does the boost and att attenuation on the on anything approximately a hundred a hundred hertz. I want this to be slightly softer. Slight glide. notes in because that might work and when I've got the kick and, and the drums in. I'm going to turn the velocity down individually on these ones because they're quite... actually peaking a little bit, it's quite loud this bass. So I might have something here, so what I'll do is I'll keep these chords, what I like to do is just group these together in a summon stack. Words. <clears throat> I'm gonna mute the rest of these. What well, I want to do that but I'm just gonna put a kick under this just to see if I can get a feel of where this track's gonna how it's gonna feel. So drums Is kicks. Well, this one's in G, so I'm gonna maybe stick to these. So, what I really look for, obviously, looking for a really nice, well rounded kick, something that's good. Decent, decent low end, but not too much if it's going to be playing off this, off this bass line. So you can see by the waveforms as well. So quite punchy kicks. I'm going to try this one first.
one thing I quite like, I don't like a kick that has too much top end on it. Um, as I don't really, I, I personally don't like the, the style of sound where the kicks, you know, the, the, the high end's a little bit too prominent. So I always tend to EQ the top end of my kicks um, as long as the body, the kicks are are better then you know it's easy much to eq it's easy enough to eq them try this one I think I'll stick with this second one here. One thing I want to do is actually want to control this bass line. It is nice, but it's really peaking. It seems to be pushing everything pretty crazy, but maybe I'm going to put everything, knock everything back down, work everything around this kick to see if this works or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take these main chords and I'm going to play them off the kick. I'm going to start bringing them up slowly just to see if it works here and to, to see if I can control the, the output. One thing I've noticed about these chords just generally is that they're quite quite muddy and the the mid sounds like the mid range is quite muddy, so let's have a look. I would always try and analyze them and maybe try and control them early on. And actually just controlling this um, this peak here seems to have like done, done the trick a little bit just to to keep the muddiness away from from the, from this region of the frequency so I can push this slightly up maybe like to minus eight and I actually want to make this shine through a little bit so on this the, the reason I'm adding it here is just to control both these chords. Um, that's why I really like doing a summing stack on on Logic. It's just to make sure everything's coming, you know, t together, and I, I can control certain chords without having to do an individual process on each layer. So these main chords, what I'll do just to maybe bring out the top end a touch. Um, I will probably use this SSL Fusion um, Vintage Drive, which is just a saturator. Um, you know, you, you can use other ones like Soft Tube, um, which are really, really good. Uh, I've still got it. Yeah, you can use this Soft Tube as well, saturate, Saturation Knob, which is pretty good as well. That one's, I think that I actually got that one when it was free, but it, I think if you want to get this one as a cheap saturator, this one also does the job, but it's not something that I use any longer. So let's, with this Vintage Drive Fusion, this is really similar to, well, it is, the digital version of the SSL Fusion uh, rack mount, which I've got in the studio here, which I generally use for for uh, mixing and mastering. So, that, so that's the end um, of when I'm writing a track. So generally, if I want to give any individual instruments a boost, um, I will just use this plugin, this Vintage Drive plugin. <clears throat> it's really good. Very easy to control. You know, you can. It's got your drive and your density. Uh, drive obviously being how much in terms of like drive is going through it. Not really sure what density means, but I tend to knock it up 
I tend to put these up about three or four, and this about two or three. And if I feel like it's pushing it too much, and I'll always just dial back on on the wet and dry, which is what's really really good about this saturation uh, plugin. I don't know if you can. I don't know if it's something that you you pick up on your on your speakers here, but it certainly does it for me. It just gives the sort of mid to low highs a little bit more harmonics. Um, just gives it that. I, it's difficult to describe. Um, I think it makes a difference, and I think it, it kind of gives it this nice little gentle gentle push. If you do find that the the chords that you're writing or or any sort of you know uh, mid melodic part doesn't really shine through I, I always will recommend putting on a vintage drive or a saturator onto them I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and push this bass line in I'm going to see if I can fit this in nice what i'll do is i'll again side chain this one just to give it a little bit of movement against the kick As you can see, I've put that down at minus 22, and it's just about sounding right. It's, it's just there, it's a little bit subtle, and I think that's where I want to be because this is a little bit of a crazy bass line. Um, and the good thing about keeping it just there, you know, this cut off, it means as we're moving on with the song, and if we really want to make a crescendo in the sound, and we want to make the, you know, maybe we're going to write this track so it builds up to a point. Um, I think that's good because we can keep it low and we can start pushing this. just about hear that crunch so I think it's okay just about there. One thing I have noticed on, on my speakers as well is the bass line frequency it really sort of jumps um, it jumps up when I change notes uh, so what I tend to do here is I really like surf EQ so this sound, the sound radix surfer, surfer EQ I really love this one because you can, it'll automatically follow your bassline, so you can just duck the really resonant bassline a little bit better. It's really subtle, I think, because I've only pushed it about minus 1.7 dB, but it's, I use it just to control the bass lines, really, just to, to save me having individually EQ every single note on it. So this is, this is a really, really great plugin. So I'll leave that there for the moment. We're getting really, really close to where I think I would like to start layering a bit more drums, a little bit more texture.
So what I'm doing now is I'm just roughly putting these other instrumentation into it just to slowly see where it where it kind of fits in a in a decibel decibel region. One thing I think might work um, on this is probably just a nice little, just an arpeggiation. Uh, I did notice on the packs, I think the guys have supplied quite a lot. So hopefully we can find something that's going to fit. I think that works quite well. Let me just use that, I think that works really nicely. You know, sometimes you don't have to travel far to get some good sounds. If it sounds good in the, in the moment, I think sometimes that can work. I'll leave this in for now because it's got that little short attack and it's not interfering with the chords too much. See, that's another good thing about this sound as well. If I want to give an again like a crescendo, if we're going to start moving from section to section, and this is going to be running, you can really open up the sustain. I think we'll work there. We'll work from that. So let's call this one up throughout. Okay.
So on, on that sort of the way I would normally write now, that's sort of me, I think that's quite, quite a nice little idea in itself. I think what's going to make it bounce, sort of like tick now is just get those drums going. So let's have a listen. I, I, I like a lot of textures and sort of foley noises. So I'm going to have a little look, just keep solo this kick and the bass line and then what I'm going to do is imagine this is the, the core of the track so the drums have really got to work off these three elements. So let's have a look. One thing I prefer in my productions, I prefer like a really nice short, sharp clap. Um, a lot of times using the sort of like the snare rim as well, I prefer those ones. This is about as close as I'll, I'll maybe get. Sounds a little bit bright, but I'll see. I think what I'll maybe need to do on this one is probably see if I can pitch this one down. quite nice. I'm going to keep pushing this. I'm going to add a little bit of a uh, reverb onto this one, dial in some reverb on the on the reverb bus. So those are probably three that I like, quite like there. I think that was my favourite. Let me just warp this just to make sure this fits. I like that one. So what I've done here, that, that I, I, what I like about this sound on its own, it's quite wide. It's almost like a foley noise. So I, I really like when percussion has a lot of width, um, especially when they're quite thin. And it's working quite nicely off this little sort of clap.
One thing I have noticed is that clap is a little bit, it's got a slight attack issue here, that's what I'm going to do. Some people like that, but I don't. There we go. So we're getting there. Let's see what these other these these two are quite similar as well, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'll actually need these. No, they're quite similar. I don't mind that. It's a little bit high pitched. What I might do is actually I'm gonna probably oops DQ this. I'm actually just gonna pitch it down. Just to give a little bit more of a it might dirt, it might sort of dirty up a, a touch. Um, so what I'll use a sound shifter. Dial this down fifth. Yeah, this is more like a shaker now, which is quite cool. So again, just to give it a little bit more interest, and probably try and put portal on this. See if I can come up with anything nice. I'm going to dial this back on the dBs as well. Maybe down to about minus eight. So let's see what I can do rhythm wise here. Rhythmic. So that's quite cool, that's the standard rate. I'm not going to change anything here, but what I've done, I've just brought it back a touch, maybe about 55%. What I quite like about this one, it starts to make it a little bit messy, so that, so these beats aren't so, it isn't so strict. With the, In terms of like the kick and the clap, and maybe these fully percussive elements, I really like the backbone to be like super on beat. Um, and then I think I like to layer things on top that are slightly off just to give it that loose feeling so it's not so robotic. So let's heat it, the beats together. Sounds great. It would be good if we had a little bit of yeah, background dirt, would be quite nice. A little bit of noise. Sounds good. So now I think we need a little bit more movement on top, so maybe just find a nice 
a hi hat or or a good top loop that's going to just give this a little bit more rhythm and a little bit more energy to it. So let's have a look. Drums. General hats and shakers. Try this one. Let's see what we can do here. Maybe just a, a raid as well, just to give it extra energy here. But I'm gonna, I can tell already, I'm just gonna EQ this like really, really, really far back. Because um, it's super bright and it's, you can tell that it's got, it's got too much body on it. Maybe a little bit of percussion here. Um, so I'm not sure what. No, I'm not sure. Something here just to fill out. It's, it's missing a touch. I'm not quite sure yet. Also just notice they've got some live vocal phrases here. I'm gonna have a little look to see if vocal might might fill this out a touch. <gasps> So I'm just going to edit this, make sure this is in key and tempo. Oh, no, sorry. One point eight. Two. 
Okay. Let's see if we can fit this in here actually because that sounded pretty cool. gonna do here is start this so it's right on the and I'm gonna loop this <clears throat> and I think I want what I want here is actually just to have this as a kind of gated noise just in the background and um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my um, shaper box 3 and there's a really good preset on here if you go to chop and fill it's at 16th pan arc I let you take the panning off it, but it gives it a So what I'm actually thinking here now is because they go really really well together, This, these soft keys and these new vocals here. That might use them as a, as a response, maybe when I'm thinking about my structure now. Um, I'm gonna have the chords in, and I'll maybe use these soft keys and the and the vocal sort of like sixteenth chops as a response. So if you can imagine here, <coughs> excuse me. So I think for me, the, the way I like to work when I'm when I'm kind of like writing ideas down, if I can get these over eight bars, and I think a lot of producers will do this as well, uh, you know, amateur and professional, they'll get to eight bars and they think, right, that sounds great. There's there's a ton of ideas in there, and the most important part now is just to really get this in a, into some uh, an, an an arrangement that's really really going to work. And I think for me, I quickly try and get out of this eight bar loop. Because you could be here, I could be here for an hour just listening to it over and over again. <clears throat> I generally think the the mix here is okay. It's fine. I can. I think I'm gonna have to boost a lot more things. But what I'll do before any of that is I'll. I like to do my arrangement. I like to just put the markers down and get going. Or you know, keep it simple. I'm gonna keep this track maybe to about three and a half minutes to four minutes long. Um, keep it simple. Based around these chords. One thing I've got in my mind is maybe ambient type intro, introduce the chords, and then maybe like a drop. Chords, bass, 
drums build up and then switch into the response, which is the key, soft keys in the vocal. Middle eight, breakdown, maybe something new there, and maybe add some, some new synth elements. Build back up, build back up, then chord all back in, and then do the same again as an outro. So what I like to do is just actually completely mark this out straight away. So let's call this ambient intro. So ambient intro for, for eight bars. Filter in the chords for another one, two, three, four, maybe here. Two, three, four. And let's do drop. So that's drums and chords. And what I like to happen every eight bars, something new happens. So every another eight bars produce new perk and soft keys. Another eight bars. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch maybe build it for another eight till here. I'm gonna say open up the chords. The chord filter. So let's build up towards this marker here. <coughs> Response. Vocal. Chords out. One, two, three, four. Let's do it for this bit here. And we can wind down to a middle eight. Middle eight. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> middle eight. Call this a breakdown. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's make it nice and long. Let's build it up, give it some tension. Everything back in. One, two, three, four. Response and outro. Let's call it one, two, three, four. And a little ambient outro here. It's a simple arrangement, something we can definitely stick to. And what I'll do now is I'm just going to start putting them in because bear in mind a lot of the, you know these movement pads, for example, if we go back and listen to them, I'm still not 100% on them. But the thing is, what I like about the way I write is that this, these eight bars of music, they're they're never really going to be the final, the final product, generally. Um, they give this has given me an idea of what everything sounds like. So with that being said, I like to then put it out into a, into a structure because when you go back and you listen to the structures, that's when you kind of decide, okay, maybe those chords actually don't work or maybe that pad doesn't work. You know, that's what I was thinking about this pad. I'm still not quite convinced on it, but as a scratch sound, it's something that will, you know, just fill a gap. For the moment, it'll do. So this is why it's important, I think, if you're in that eight bar, if you're in that eight bar uh, structure loop, I think you should get out of it as quick as possible and just get on with the arrangement. So let's try and let's try and do an arrangement from left to right. Let's just see if we can we can understand, you know, if it's gonna be an ambient intro, how we're gonna do that. So what I've had done here is I'd filter in the chords. So I'm just gonna add these chords in here. If it's an ambient intro, I really want like a soft soft pad. So let's have a look and let's have a look in Diva again. Where's Diva? Let's see what Diva's saying. Because if I can get a nice soft intro pad, have a look at Visions 3 because I've not actually used this yet. Pad. I want a real, a real ambient style pad.
so. So that's, let's, let's try that as an intro, and I noticed in these other packs as well they've got some atmospheres, so let's see if there's any tonal, tonal atmospheres I can use in G. I think there's anything quite here that's going to work. Drones. That actually could work quite nicely. Quite loud. Sorry about that, I had to change, <clears throat> had to change the mouse over, ran out of battery, <laughs> bad timing. Okay, so we'll go back to, to where we were at here, just with the intro. So I'm just going to warp, warp this, just to make sure it's all in time, Oops, until we're there. This doesn't have this in the front. So what I want to do with the chords, I've added a, a single EQ here just to a high cut so I can filter them in. So let's see how this works. are obviously cool, still quite low. I need to just make sure I've got these correct. Also just to make sure the automation's copied over on these.
And here what I'm going to add in, maybe keep the dirt in, the atmospheric dirt all the way through. And I want the, I want one of these little um, sort of foley sounds. Maybe this one, I think. Come in here. Okay, so we're getting there. What I want to do is ambient intro, build things up. So as soon as we get here, we can have the drums in. So what I'll do is I'll actually just copy the kick lab and these in here. <clears throat> and what I'm doing at the moment, I'm just going to get towards this drop here and then I'm going to start using some of the some of the FX here you know like the tension builders and, and the reverse crashes so we'll get a better idea of what the transition will sound like in a second. What I want to do is actually I just want to fill up the, the intro with some, some keys. So what it is, I actually quite like those little counter melodies just in the background. So I'm just gonna just gonna improvise a few of them. That should give it a little bit of um, interesting kind of like little no notes just to keep the start of it a little bit more tense. And um, what I'll do is add a little 
stereo delay to this one. And what I actually want, I want to keep building this up, so I might see actually how these pads work. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to write in sort of G5 here from 9 onwards and I'm going to automate the cutoff. So, do it from 9 bar 9 to bar 5. Let's do that. Let's see, drag this right towards the end. And what I'll do is just automate this cutoff. Yeah. So we'll see how this sounds in terms of tension. So we're getting there. What I think it needs is a little bit more. Just before it, maybe like a clap fill. I'll try that. That's got a really nice reverse clap. Reverse clap onto it. Before. Right, so I think it's at 120. So. Nice. Cue the bottom of this one, I'm going to add a little bit more uh, delay to it. Maybe put the stereo delay on as well. And also, I really want, I want some risers here as well. Maybe not that. Weeps. Eight bars. Yeah, that could work. And 22 BPM, so we just need to quickly stretch this one, stretch this one out. What I'll do move this back approximately. Here. So that's like super loud. So what we'll do is we'll really, really, really dial this one back. And again, I'm actually just going to kick this in uh, and delay and some of the reverb. I think it's quite harsh. So I'll maybe just dial up the, the top of it as well and really put it back down in the mix. What I might do is just open up these uh, chords as well. It just needs a little bit more movement and a little bit more energy coming in to the top here. So let's try this. If 
5db as well. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to just chop that end of the pad off and I'm going to open up the the reverb on this as well just to, this is the percussive element that's going to come in the background so this should also hopefully like give everything a big lift That's cool. I just noticed there's a pack here uh, called Scent Flourishes. I don't know if that's going to fit, but it's always worth a bash just to see if something like that may give it a little bit more energy on the drop. I'm just going to see if this works. One, two, one. I actually quite like it, it gives it a little bit more harmony just when it comes in there. So what I'll do is I'm just going to EQ this. It's a bit more space, I'm going to put reverb, reverb onto this. So we're close there, I would like maybe like a reverse crash. Um, can find one anywhere. Drums. Pack. Symbols. I'm just going to see if this reverse crash works, uh, but I'm just going to be conscious that it's quite tinny, so I'm just going to make sure it's really far back in a mix. And really, really, really cute um, saying, not too abrasive. So I'm gonna cut this, and I'm gonna put. I'm gonna start with minus twenty on this one because I think it's gonna be quite loud. I probably need a little bit of studio delay. Yeah, that's sounding cool. Let's go from the start just to make sure we've got that transition nice.
actually want to put that little the slint in flowers. I actually want to hear it a little bit more delayed, so I might even chuck the, the tape delay on it. Um just to give it an extra delay. Okay, so now I think I'm pretty happy with that transition. So what I'll do is I'll start now working on on this section and get it more of a yeah. Try and get this more into something more coherent. So let me just fix this. So this is. I think something to just, this sounds a little bit abrupt coming in, so I might even put these claps back in half a bar before, um, and then, she needs a little bit more dynamic, I'm going to put this crash, I actually quite like it now. I think actually might work here. I'm tempted to see if I can maybe do another layer of chords just to sit on top of it. the same rhythm except I just want to work on this this works Take out these middle. I'm gonna take out these middle notes. Yep. And then I'm just gonna knock this up an octave.
tape delay to this crash just to keep it going. If like it just stops a bit too short for me. So, big chords, octave up. I think that's just giving it a slight boost. I might even up these to minus 10. So now on the next section here, this sort of, we're going to start opening up this filler here. Um, and then hopefully I can take these chords out and it should transition a little bit more nicely into this next section. So we get a little bit of relief from the chords as well. Here. See if we can get this section now building up really nicely. the pads opening up so whenever this comes here we get this big crescendo It's close, um, I just I think it's a touch loud here. Um, let me just knock this down, I might even just EQ this volume a touch just for this section. Um, he's here, so let's see, it's close.
So here I'm just going to open up the sustain. I'm going to see if this adds a little bit more tension to it. I think that kind of works there. So we've got now this from the start, we've got our ambient intro. Building up, drop the chords, and now we're introducing the new hat or the percussion. And then here we're opening up the chord filter, then we're having something different for this section. just keep that going as well. All we have to do is just make sure the section gives us space away from the chords because they're, they're obviously quite repetitive so I want to make sure we're not relying on them too much throughout the full track. So if we go in this section what I'm going to do I'm going to start filtering out these these pads as well and also I'm going to probably automate these rides out of the way as well. So once we get here, there's a bit more of a gap. Take away four bar, four kicks there. this because um, I don't want the pads to hit again because I think when the pads are pressed it's, it's sort of like giving it too much it's not really what I want so what I'll do is I'll join these and so I don't have to mess around with the automation and I'll just grab these and stretch them back out Right, so here actually what I think I kind of want coming into this middle eight. I really just want these kicks. I think I want the bass line in. And I think I actually want to bring in this original drone here because I really like this, but I want to fill, this should filter in pretty nicely. And what I'll do again just for... No, no, I'm not gonna add a side tune actually. Let me see how let me see how this sounds first.
don't like those. I don't like that there. I like the build up to it, but I think I'll keep the keys in here. I think that's what it's missing. <laughs> So I think we've got that transition nailed there. That kind of like <clears throat> I still also sorry to interrupt myself, but like I really want to still open up this baseline filter. So I forgot about that. I'm going to probably dial this in here again, just to add a little bit more tension. Just building up to this. I want to do in this section as well. I'm gonna do a few double kicks just to give it a little bit more so, so it's not so static. thing I think just if you, you could probably hear it by now what I really like in my productions is for um, various synth parts to kind of take over I, I think a good example is probably in this section rather than let it being quite static you can hear this first part is more focused on the vocal chops with the soft keys <laughs> And obviously with these pads, these pads here, and when these pads start to come out, that's why I've opened up these um, these arps. Sorry, do you know what? I'm actually going to tidy the naming on this. So, for example, when this pad starts to filter out, I want this arp to start shining through and that's I, I think is a is a key way to keep the, the track quite interesting so you can hear it here. I'll play it again.
right, so that gives us back into this next section. The breakdown. So now, what we really, really want to do is make sure we're coming back to the chords, build everything back up again. So by the time we get to the section 97, I want the chords back in, I want the rides in, I want all the drums and I want it to be quite euphoric. So yeah, we're sitting pretty good so far. So let's work from the middle eight and let's work into the breakdown to see if we can get that transition right and let's see if we can utilize the, the main chords. <clears throat> I might even change up the chord style um in terms of like the keys, but we'll see see if that works or not. Um I'll maybe add the chords, I'll maybe add the bass. This time I might add the drums and I'll see if I can find a good snare roll just for the tension, just for everything to build back up. Yeah, I may do. I may try that. I may actually just re-record these big chord parts and just keep them a bit more simple, just for this breakdown. Let's try that and see if this works. I think it needs a little transition there. Maybe the maybe these we'll see how this sounds. Yeah, I don't think I would do the, the drone in there right now. I think it all works pretty nicely off this. But what I'm going to do is just build these back up. So what I might do is just keep this, keep this on a separate layer just for ease. Probably going to add the filter just to fill this up because it should sound quite nice. Floating in. Probably around here. So here, I think the sign of a good breakdown is here is just start moving 
every sort of eight bars in your element comes in. So by the time we get maybe to like 89, I'm actually going to extend this breakdown. I really want to elongate it to make it quite special. But I would put, for example, here, 81, I would add these, um, this little top loop. And then in here, I would maybe add the hats and the claps. Here. Let's see. going we'll figure out these transitions once we get closer to the time but we're nearly there what i'm going to do is just really open these up and i might actually just re-record this bass line um, probably make a separate layer for this bass that way i can control at minus 25 take off the kick start I'm going to probably open up this little bit with some tape delay. Um, let's see, tape delay. No. Yes, I'm going to take the two tape delay here. What I'll do is I'll take these flutter intensities off. And actually put it on the full range here. is just to give this a bit more background noise, we'll see how that works. I'll put it in temporarily. Let's try this. we're getting there as well. Now I think I've got that little sweep here. I definitely want to see if we've got a nice um, snare rolls. Let's have a look. Snare rolls. 
from here let's stretch this out so let's listen to it just from the start I'm gonna just grab this and actually have it here and maybe just look the first part of it so I can really build this up Sounding pretty good. I think it needs something else. We're close. We're very, very close. Let's go right from the start of the break to and see what we're, we're missing. <laughs> It needs just something else, maybe a little. Yeah, it's just it's, it's really really close. We just need something that's gonna really push it. See, this is why the basic wave sample packs are very fun. That is just that's gonna work really nicely. And that's just something I can slot pretty much in. Because that is, that is excellent, that's got so much tension to it, that's going to be really useful in building this up. So what I'll do is I'll loop it from, from here, try and fit this in. <laughs> I think I want coming into this as well is I'm going to have a look at Portal again and I want to build something, I want to kind of really distort these chords as they're coming up just towards this drop, I want to see if there's anything that we can do here something just really don't know, something just to really mess it up
ideas are really affecting my processing. <laughs> So that, that can work. Let's see if we can get this. Let's see if we can in here. sure that, <laughs> that comes out right at the drop just to make sure it's silent So I think we're close. Yeah, this is this is sounding pretty good. So if we go from the middle eight and we go here, I think we're close to having this just like coming back in pretty nicely. See if we can get this. So I've copied the the sort of drop here, but I'm gonna see if we can get the sound in really, really nice when it comes in. Yeah. Gonna add some. I think I need a, a white noise drop here or a crash or something just to give it a bit more. It's 
just going to open these pads back up, maybe the pad might work. What I might actually add is the, the ARP in here as well. Let's see if this works. To see if it plays off the... I need something quite bright coming in. There's a lot of delay on here. Find a, let's find a crash or an impact. Maybe not. Maybe.
cool. Not really much nearly there. Okay, what I've added in, I've I noticed on that drop, it's a touch muddy, kind of dragged the energy back a little bit. So what I added onto this one was the Sonable Smart EQ3. Um, what it does, I just I, I, I put it to my, my stack on here. And what it does is just analyzes the frequencies and, and it'll do it like a sort of automatic EQ. But it actually has worked really well here. You can hear it without it. This is it with it on. Sounds much better, I think. Keep that, keep that automation on. Because now what I really want to do in this section is just do, I want to do the response section here. So I'm just going to copy this section, put this in here. Take you out, and I'm going to take the rides out. You know, I'm going to take these double kicks out. I don't like them. Don't, don't need them. I think it's just a little bit pointless, actually. Don't like them at all. I'm going to keep it straight. I think actually the melodies are doing a lot of the heavy lifting in this track. So I'm going to keep it simple.
yes, I'm just trying to get this little outro done here. I might actually add in the intro pad just in the end here. Just just for continuity. And it's quite a nice pad as well. It shouldn't finish so abruptly on the other pad. Let's drag that out so it gets a nice outro. What I'm going to do is just take the stereo out. I'm just going to automate this out so it's nice and quiet at the back. Back end of the track. So, let me just listen to this last section again. I think that's sounding pretty good as a demo version. Um, I'm also quite conscious that yeah, that's already it's already two and a half hours. Um, it's gone pretty quick. Uh, what I'll do, I, the, the the thing is though, at this stage, if I was writing a record, you know, out with time limits, um, I would really now probably focus on doing a little bit of a mix. It's still sounding pretty decent, but for the sake of making sure everything, you know, has that that kind of sound to it as a, as a demo, what I'll do is I'll show you some quick way what I'll do at the end here. I'll go to the loudest part of my track, which is probably this. I've got about 4 dBs of headroom here, so actually I might put the Fusion drive on here, just a touch. Add in my smart EQ. I 
I've got the three wee DBs DBs of headroom here. And if I want to get this sort of sounding like a polished demo or something that I can I want to listen to in my car, just to give me a rough idea of how the sound towards the final mix. I always really like adding the God particle onto this. I'm gonna change this to three so I'm not squashing it. So if you listened without, with all, you know, all my processing off quickly on the master strip. And then it adds everything back on. I'd say that's pretty much the finished track. It's a really good idea, it's a really good bass idea. If I was writing in, you know, normally in the studio, I would take that idea and I would probably probably sit on it for a few days and, and then come back and really see. I think it's worth listening to right from the start, just to see how we're feeling about the overall dynamics, the feel. So let's go.
Cool. So that's my track. That was made. That was made with everything. Every sound on there was on a Basic Waves um, sample or or their Diva, and that was actually exclusively on Diva. I know that they do a lot of Serum presets as well, which are absolutely excellent. <clears throat> but today, I really just wanted to focus on doing the on, on, on focusing on Diva. I mean, for for me, that goes to show you the strength of these sample packs as well. And how much you can take from them, and how much they can be such a a good creative building block for for your track. You know, if you, if you're working on some software synths and you've got a great foundation, you're gonna end up with a full track. You know, that was five minutes. That was just over two and a half hours to go from simple idea to fin to almost finished track. You know, it's something that can be done. So hopefully, you know, everyone watching, I hope you, you like the song, you know, um, and ho- hopefully my process wasn't a little bit too confusing. And, you know, I always like monitor, you know, the videos. So if anyone has any questions, you know, feel free to hit me up on, on the comment section or, or feel free to hit me up on Instagram as well. That's Instagram. That's my, my at is Tagavaka Music. So, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope this was educational um, and hope you like the music. And yeah, check out my music. I'm going to be releasing a couple of bits on Aduna Deep this year. Um, also working on their ambient label uh, reflections. And yeah, plenty of music to be coming out this year. Thanks very much. And yeah, take it easy.